Now we can take advantage of a basic bedrock fact about multiple choice tests and use that bedrock fact to fashion a strategy and then use that strategy to quickly find a right answer. The basic bedrock fact is that when they wrote the question, they wrote the right answer first. The corollary of this bedrock fact is that after they wrote the right answer, they wrote wrong answers to capture predictable mistakes so that people who make those mistakes can find those mistakes and pick the answers. Now we can create a strategy. We look for relationships between the answer choices that reflect the structure of the problem because these will include the predictable mistakes. Now let's apply this strategy to a real GRE question. If the average arithmetic mean of five consecutive integers is 12, what is the sum of the least and greatest of the five integers? Now let's break down the question a little more carefully. We're looking for the sum of the least and the greatest of the five integers. And then we look at the answers. 24, 14, 12, 11, 10. Did you notice that there were three consecutive integers? 12, 11, 10, and 10 was the least. If we start with 10 and count to 5, we go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 14 is the greatest number, and there it is in answer B. Since we're looking for the sum, we add 10, which is the least, to 14, which is the greatest, and we get 24. Sure enough, 24 is answer A, which is our answer. One out of four people who took the GRE got this question wrong. Now let's review how your friends were supposed to do the problem the old-fashioned way, the way you did it in high school. Since the average of five consecutive integers is 12, we can set up an equation of x and x plus 1 and x plus 2 and x plus 3 and x plus 4 over 5 equals 12. When we combine the unknowns and the knowns on the top of the equation, we get 5x's plus 10 over 5 equals 12. We multiply both sides of the equation by 5 to get rid of the fraction and end up with 5x plus 10 equals 60. We isolate the unknowns on one side of the equation by subtracting 10 from both sides and get 5x equals 50. We divide both sides of the equation by 5 and get x equals 10. Now that we've proven that x equals 10, we could look at answer E, and there's 10. We could pick it, couldn't we? But then we remember that we have five consecutive integers, so if x equals 10, x plus 1 equals 11, x plus 2 equals 12, x plus 3 equals 13, and x plus 4 equals 14. That means the greatest of the five consecutive integers is 14, and there is answer B, 14. Do you want to pick it? If you're still paying attention, you remember we're looking for the sum of the least and the greatest, so we want to pick answer A, 24. Testing for the public. Nonprofit since 1985. No one makes things easier. 